What is up, ladies and gentlemen? NYKia31 here. NYKia's film breakdowns. I'm going to go over the Atlanta Falcons defense on this Super Bowl Sunday morning. And this shouldn't be too involved because <laughs> I have the link to the one I did on the Seahawks a couple of years ago. It's the same exact scheme, same exact system, verbatim, almost to the letter. Um... But just for a brief little overview, you're going to see single high cover three and single high cover one. That's, that's basically it. Now, of course, the personnel is not quite the same as when Dan Quinn was with the Seahawks, but uh, they've, they've done a very good job of building the team towards how to play that style. They're very fast, very athletic, a lot of range. Um, they have a nice collection of fast linebackers that can cover a lot of ground in this scheme. You have, you know, the corners playing, and the corners and the safety, and it's in a single high safety playing three deep. You have your enforcer safety, like Keanu Neal, playing the Cam Chancellor role. And the linebackers, as a result, have to be very athletic and cover crossers and obstruct routes and run with um, seamers as well. So... It's a scheme that has been copied a lot throughout the league. You know, 10, 15 years ago, most of the league was playing two deep cover two. Now everyone in the league is playing mainly single high, as well as quarters coverage, and you have your usual dose of man and all that good stuff. But you see a lot more base uh, single high defenses in the NFL now, and some do it well. Some, like the Jags, <laughs> don't do it well and end up getting their coach fired. But there you have it. And the principles are pretty much um, a lot like the two deep old school Tampa 2. You know, Pete Carroll, he coached under and was mentored by the great Monty Kiffin and basically applied a lot of the same principles, both on defensive line play and coverage, as Kiffin, but does it from a three deep look. And, you know, having an Earl Thomas makes that be able to be done because the single high safety has to cover a lot of ground. He cannot give up the post. He cannot get lost and uh, give up the deep seam. You really need a great athlete with a lot of range, speed, and good instincts and discipline in order to make this defense work. And you saw what happened to Seattle's defense when Earl got knocked out for the season. That role is invaluable, as well as being able to hold up on your corners on the outside, of course, and getting a pass rush. Atlanta does blitz a little bit more than what Seattle does. And mostly when they do blitz, it's right up the middle, right up the A-gaps. But they tend to be one of the lower percentage of blitz teams in the league. And they rely on discipline, technique, and, um, of course, overall talent to make the scheme work. So we're going to take a look at what they do. It's not going to be very long because, like I said, I'll be repeating myself on what I did on my, on my Seahawks video. But, you know, for those of you who have, haven't seen it broken down like this, this will give you an idea of what you're going to be seeing. You're going to see this look over and over and over again. Now here, they do a lot of window dressing before the snap at times. Like you have the corner at the bottom in a press look. The corners at the top of your screen bailing out. Sometimes they'll show press press and bail out. Sometimes they'll play with a press technique, but out of three deep zone still. Sometimes it'll be man one. There's your single high safety. You see Vic Beasley playing that Leo position. He's tilted out to the outside shoulder. You have your two hosses anchoring the middle. And you see the corner at the bottom. He's in a press look. And the corner is bailing out. Free snap. Good gap discipline, good gap control, good flow to the ball and the ball carrier. You see Victor Beasley here tilted a little bit. Again, Seattle does the same thing with Avril and Bennett. Backside end does a good job of scraping down. Controls this gap here. 
Get some good penetration here as well. Very nice. And rally and fly to the ball. Now here's what concerns me about the Falcons in this game. I'm not too confident about how good their corners actually are. And also, I worry about their youth on defense causing confusion and causing breakdowns. Super Bowls have a way of snowballing and getting away from teams. We see so many blowouts in this game. And some of it is due to the you know simple human nature of the stakes being so high and the pressure being so high and everyone watching. You play tight, you try to do too much, or you have a mental breakdown. And next thing you know, you're getting up a big play. You're down a couple of possessions. The whole team starts pressing. And before you know it, it's 24 nothing. How many Super Bowls have gone like that? Most of them have. And then every five to ten years, you get a classic game that goes right down to the wire. You know, hopefully we have that scenario. But, you know, pre-snap here. You're going to see some confusion with Montgomery coming out of the backfield. You can't have this against the Patriots because the Patriots will do stuff like this all the time, all night long. They go from empty. They shift. They use a lot of personnel packages to run similar concepts. And they're going to try to confuse you. And here, the corner on the top just gets beat by a, you know, route by Jordy Nelson and off of the races he goes. And I'm really concerned about their ability to cover Julian Edelman. Because Edelman will line up mostly in a slot where he can run those choice routes of his. And I think it's going to be a really tough chore for them to keep track of him and to also keep their discipline and not get befuddled by all of New England's um, personnel groupings. Here, empty. Again, I expect New England to exploit this all night long. And if they can't cover Edelman, they're not going to win. If they can't get pressure out of four when they go empty or with a A-gap blitz. Here, they do, here he, he does a bluff blitz there. But um, if they can't hold up down the seams, and if they can't get uh, pressure without having to expend a lot of resources, it's going to be a problem. Again, when they blitz, they mostly blitz out the, up the A-gaps, and it's going to force a hot throw like that. You see you have Victor Beasley here standing up. Or Vic Beasley, I should say. Brooks Reed's going to be coming. Again, single high, press look across the board. Another A-gap blitz is coming. See Victor Beasley wide, lined up wide. I keep on calling him Victor Beasley. <laughs> I always do that. You're going to get a double here. Center picks up the inside rusher. Guard picks up this rusher. There's no one left to account for the blitzing linebacker because Montgomery's going out on a route. So if you're going to bring an A-gap blitz like that, coverage has to hold up, and they do a really nice job here. Good coverage here. A guy's going to circle in over here, but far too late. Rodgers was already flush. Guy's already in his face. And incomplete pass. See the wide alignment here by, v by Beasley. Nanos, getting their A-gap nanos on. <laughs> Here's what happens when you blitz a good quarterback. It gets picked up, and your linebacker gets sucked in by a play fake. See that window there? It's really tough, really tough. You know... Windows right here. He's right open right now because Jones got suckered in there, and that is what you can't have happen. You got to have as few of those happen as humanly possible. And this is just a great player being great. 
there's, no, there's nothing you can do about that. It's a straight four-man rush. He loops outside, or he runs outside of the twist stunt, and, I mean, my God. That's just greatness. You just tip your hat and move on. Same song, different verse, folks. This look does not change all that much. Single high. You see a wide nine Leo alignment. They call this the Leo spot. They're, you know, best, most athletic, pure edge rusher. This is where, if you're a Seattle Seahawks fan, your Brandon Meebane would be. You know, the idea is to have your big hosses inside and a hybrid 3-4 style defensive end on the closed side and your edge rushing freak on this open side here. And they're showing press. But will it be man or will it be cover three? Or a hybrid of both. Really good technique at the bottom of the screen here. Another wheel route. Good shuffle bail or soft shoe technique at the bottom. That was pretty. And Richard Sherman, he does this to perfection. Right here. Yep, they're running a wheel route and a flat combo. And they'll give you that throw all night. If, if, you're, if you're forced to check down and then have all that speed rally to the ball. If the Falcons do that, they'll be in great shape. But the key is to avoid busts, avoid being suckered in by route combinations and wheels and dig post combos and taking peeks into the backfield and buying play fakes. Another blitz. Very clever. This is probably going to, this is more than likely going to force a double team, put him on an island, put him on an island. And you can overload three on two here if you bring a rusher and force this guy to have to pick up somebody. And that's exactly what they do. And he's forced to get rid of it hot. And again, you know, I think fans, they get caught up in, well, why don't they adjust? Why don't they mix up their coverages more? Why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? A team is built how they're built, whether through personnel or a coaching philosophy. And in the best case scenario, it's obviously <laughs> a combination of the two. But they're, they practice and drill to play a certain way until it becomes instinct. Here they actually play two deep. If they change it up and play two man under. Let's go back and watch that. But, you know, they have their base. They have their way they want to play. And, you know, they'll throw curveballs every now and then. But what they do is what they do. Right here, they've been playing three deep all the time. And this time, it's a straight two man. a lot of holding going on too. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> Again, ain't gonna change. Bailing out all the way, soft cushion. So the look is going to be the same 90% of the time. What's going on post-snap will vary here and there, but largely it's going to be man one, cover three, over and over and over and over again. But I think they'll play more man than the Steelers did. I think, no, they'll not think, they definitely will play more man than the Steelers did. They're more equipped to play more man coverage. But I just worry about those slots. I really like this Keanu Neal. Really good athlete. Again, single high. This is press man to bring a little bit of delay rush. Or actually, it was more of a case where the back was staying in the blocks of the linebacker joined the rush. See Ty Montgomery in the backfield. 
and they make they made Ty Montgomery block, but I really like Keanu Neal. Really nice athlete. Just make the throw as hard as you possibly can. What do you know? Single high again. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if we see, if we see a healthy dose of Garrett Blunt today. Here they just run a delay, but, you know, line up under center a little bit and try to get that big boy rolling downhill because this defense is fast, but they're a little bit small. And Blunt's a big boy. Here is a bust. These are the things that you can't have. You got to minimize these as much as you possibly can. You're not going to be perfect, but you can't have too many of these or... Mr. Brady is going to shred you. Hook defender is a little bit in la-la land here. I don't know what he's looking at, really. He reroutes him. And squeezes here. Here... We got a guy playing traffic cop instead of paying attention to what he's doing. Let's him runs right down the middle here, right down the numbers. And you see the safety here. He's already turning and going, oh, crap, we got a problem. And Jared Cook is free as a bird. And you see Ricardo Allen <laughs> put his hands up saying, you know, that wasn't on me. Someone screwed up. <laughs> hey, the deep center fielder, he knows when someone screws up when he has to run all the way across the field to pick up your man. <laughs> uh, I've done a few of those in my time. <laughs> all you guys who've played DB out there, you guys know. Who had him? I had him. I had him. No one had him. <laughs> So yeah, folks, this is how the Falcons play defense. Probably a bit more blitzing than what you see out of uh, Pete Carroll, but their foundation is the same. They'll throw in their wrinkles here and there. I'm certain they have wrinkles for the Super Bowl, but by and large, they're going to do what got them to the dance. And then it's just a matter of execution and who's better. The Patriots offense, if there's one request I've gotten more than any other, it's can you break down what in the world the Pats do offensively? And I've kind of put it off because it's really difficult to do. They're so multiple. But yeah, we'll do that next after this one. So hope you guys enjoyed and enjoy your Super Bowl Sunday. Talk to you all later. Peace.